ever since that day, right? Uh, in 1791, I think Haiti has been absolutely on like a free fall. I just want you guys to know this. Um, to the point where now, uh, apparently these street fraternities have absolutely taken over Haiti's capital and all the citizens there just want all these people to leave. But who is going to come and help Haiti? Um, there have been all these countries around the world who have seen the plight of of the of the Haitians uh, and have done nothing about it. But why would they? I mean, they obviously still may be somewhat uh, offended at what happened on that fateful day in 1791. Who knows? Maybe, right? Uh, that could be the reason why no country wants to, you know, uh, do anything large with Haiti. But either way, let's jump to this video immediately. Uh, coming from CNN. Let's check it out. Let's do it. Haiti's government has imposed a state of emergency and a curfew amid surging gang violence and a deadly gang assault on the capital's main prison that allowed thousands of inmates to escape. The U.S. Embassy in Haiti is urging citizens to leave the country. Haiti has been engulfed in turmoil for years, as our CNN's David Culver explains. All right, let's get it. So we're like a block away? Yeah. It's as close as we can get driving. So we layer up and walk. Oh, yeah. You can already smell it. Bro, to be honest, you should be walking with, like, a, a military, you know, uh, look at people attachment. Still making their commute as tires are burning right in the middle of the street here. No police barricade, no firefighters. Most seemingly unfazed. These flames have been burning for several hours. Haiti has been engulfed in turmoil for years. Right. <laughs> We don't have a home to live in. We don't have food to eat. That's what they're shouting. Many here now fear their country is on the brink of exploding. Does it feel safe right now? No, no. No, look at it. My country is broken right now. These folks blame the current government and prime minister. Hey, bro, to be honest, this has been broken for a very long time. Minister Ariel Henry appointed following the assassination of President mm -hmm. Jovenel Moise in 2021. They want Henry to go. But he says he's not yet ready to step down. This has panicked street shootouts like this one have become a near daily occurrence. It's often a clash between police and the gangs, which have essentially taken Haiti hostage. They flaunt their weapons and wealth on TikTok, threatening police and basking in lawlessness. Many res Ah, but those those videos don't get blocked on TikTok. Okay. I'm asking for myself because my videos always get taken down. Now living behind barricades. This is not the gangs doing this. This is the folks that live in these neighborhoods who are putting these up to prevent gangs from coming in and kidnapping. Right. Using whatever might stop or slow the kidnappers. Efforts to protect families and preserve innocence. That innocence shattered for others. This 14-year-old says he was recruited by a gang at 11. Tells me he's often forced to burn the bodies of those killed by other gang members. I want to change my way of life, he says, with a heavy look of shame. At an early morning food distribution, we meet dozens of women who have felt the wrath of gang violence. I can imagine. At times, we notice a lost stare in their eyes. Yeah, I mean, listen, uh, what we're seeing right now is absolute hopelessness. Um, like, I understand a lot of these people from this country uh, are um, making their way to Mexico and coming through our southern border. Um, Haitians and, and Venezuelans are, are making up a gigantic portion of the people who are actually uh, migrating into the United States of America to seek refuge. Um, I think uh, these people are probably some of the ones who need the most of it based off of uh, the issues that are happening in their country, like visual issues. Don't get me wrong, Venezuela is absolutely wild at times, right? But there is no government here any longer, right? Uh, at least Venezuela does have one. Um, but this is still absolutely wild. Like, what can the outside world do? I mean, we could probably go in and do something. But again, this is another sovereign nation. Uh, they have to, uh, you know, be able to stand up for them themselves in these instances here. Um, what can be done? It seems like this country is absolutely, it, it, it may not make another hundred years, guys. All of them have been victims. Venezuela so will. Here was not been a victim. This woman's sister shot and killed. This one's husband burned alive inside their home. This woman tells us she was raped. She shows us the marks left behind. 
In recent months, gangs have seized more and more control over this country, including the roads leading to Port-au-Prince. Officials estimate that gangs now control as much as 80 percent of the capital. Even the U.S. Embassy and International Airport are mostly surrounded by rival gang territories. It's led the Haitian National Police to create an undercover unit. We go with them. It's not working. To the front lines. This unit actually goes into gang areas, looks for gang members and, and fights them. The officers ask us not to reveal our exact location. And they tell us to work quickly, given we're standing exposed on a windy hillside. As police have described it to me, basically everything behind me is occupied by the gangs. It's under their control. There are homes all around us. We're standing on the foundation of one home that had been abandoned. They offer to drive us closer. I mean, and you pass. Get ready. Yes, our Don't do it, bro. I'm geared up now, ready for potential gunfire to come our way. Stay away from the windows as we come in here. They describe this as the last defensive point, and beyond here is what they consider to be their front lines. From here, you can see the battlefield. No signs of any suspected gang members, for now. The front lines, guys, it's like a suburb. Police are not the only ones trying to gain the upper hand here. In a fractured state, alternatives to the gangs and government surface. We're headed to meet a commander of BSAP. Haiti's Armed Environmental Protection Agency that has splintered from the Henri government, challenging its legitimacy. We pull up to a gated compound. The man in the purple shirt leads us in. He then changes into his BSAP uniform. It's the commander. He's in hiding from police. His message echoes the anti-government protester. He flexes BSAP's strength in numbers and its potential to help bring stability. But when it comes to his own family, you mentioned you have four kids. What do you think their future is in this country? Get them out of the country right now. Country. He fears their future is best served leaving Haiti. The desperation right. is felt beyond Port-au-Prince in places like Jeremy. And you 100% know uh, Republica Dominicana is absolutely not going to take any of these, any of the, any Haitians. They're not going to do it. Right. So what is left here uh this is the reason why they are um seeking refuge in the united states of america the UN this is why they're the doing this way to get there it's about an hour ride members of the world food program but I mean, obviously guys we shouldn't be the only ones having to take the world's refugees right um but this is just what they're doing this is what i'm saying take us through this, this rural coastal community devastated by recent protests Right back there, you had the five people were killed last week. Right there? It was right there, yeah. yeah. We arrive at this agricultural consortium. The WFP buys food from these local farmers to then hand out. But the recent protests have blocked distribution efforts, leaving some food to spoil. It's frustrating for the WFP officials. As they know, you don't have to look far to find hunger here. These farmers pointing to their stomachs, lifting their shirts to us. Are you hungry? A lot of folks will look at Haiti and they'll say it's had issues for so long. The question that no doubt people in the U.S. will ask is, well, why should we help? Well, there are two reasons why you need to help. First of all, there are, it's on humanitarian grounds. But then there's also um, our own self-interest in the U.S. So the longer you wait to act on Haiti, uh, okay. the more migrants there will be on our southern border. It's too late. It's already happening right now. Um, but the thing about it, you, you can talk about humanitarian things, but um, America en masse doesn't really help uh, countries like this uh, specifically um, en masse. I mean, the countries need to be like Israel or um, the Ukraine or basically anything in Europe. Uh, that generally tends to be how that works en masse. If you're talking about large budget help, uh, it tends to be that or how about this it looks like that at least it's, it's it's that simple many here search for normalcy where they can even with the threat of violence missing mass for some is not an option they wear their sunday best and unite in prayer places of worship are not immune from gang terror but they at least offer a moment of tranquility and hope for now 
Uh, David Colfer joins us now live from Los Angeles. David, just really <clears throat> incredible piece there. Um, what can you share with us about what the latest is on the ground? We know, of course, over the weekend there, were, there was that massive prison break. I mean, what's the latest you can tell us? Oh, Rahel, we ended that piece there with the moment of tranquility and hope. It's been shattered. Over the past 72 hours, what we have seen is a surge in the violence there. You mentioned that prison outbreak. Two prisons in particular were targeted there by gangs. And according to Haitian police, I mean, this could be a game changer in sustaining any sort of stability that's left. Because Yeah, that's, that's done. This outbreak has included what they believe to be more than 3,000 inmates who have gotten out. But beyond that, you're looking at a country, if we take a step back here, that has been dealing with natural disasters, political torm turmoil, all of this in, in recent years, and uh, people there... Guys, it's not just recent years at all. As you saw in that piece, really say that they want to have their own choice in things and their own leadership. And, and right now there's a leader, a prime minister, Ariel Henry, who has been appointed. They have not had elections since 2016. The Henri government says that the reason they have not had elections is because of the instability that we pointed out there. You've got dozens of gangs, and you see some of these images that were airing from the past weekend uh, that have basically taken over the entire country. And, and now. Wait, hold on, really quickly. Are, are there gun manufacturers in Haiti? Who's making all these bullets? What, what brand are the, the firearms that they're using? I want to know thoroughly. How are they getting their hands on these guns? Are there, is there, unless there's a man, unless Haiti has a manufacturer that manufactures these firearms in Haiti, where are they getting them from? Now, what's really concerning, Rahel, is just in the past 72 hours, these gangs are starting to coordinate with each other. And so that suggests that there's this united front now that's really going to make hmm. things difficult for police. Yeah, and, and even more difficult for, for Haitians. And I just thought it was so... Um, it was so striking, just your interview with uh, the young boy, the 14-year-old, um, talking to some of the parents. Um, let me ask you, but you have reported from Haiti before. How different does this unrest feel from what you have witnessed before? Well, from what we just saw on the ground just in, in the past couple of weeks when we were there, what we are seeing now, and this kind of goes along with even as we were planning for this trip, is that today going there is safer than tomorrow and those are the words from one contact on the ground when i was trying to figure out okay and it was not safe bro don't go back when when should we logistically get on the ground when we we're initially mm. planning this trip and and that suggests that you, you really cannot understate the dire situation that's happening and it's not only from a violence perspective but just a humanitarian one you heard that gentleman there with the world food program explain to us that this is beyond trying to help Haiti. This is trying to sustain regionally what could be another country that if it falls into shambles, which really Haiti right now is a broken it, it is. you then have a people who are so desperate they're going to go elsewhere. And we've already seen that. Having covered immigration at the border, mm -hmm. the number of Haitians that have been trying to come over it's wild. increased significantly right. in recent years. And the warning is that that's going to continue because, quite frankly, they have nowhere else to go. Right. And we're the closest. That's the thing. We have a fallen state uh, within our sphere. Right. Um, where are they going to go? They're going to run straight to us. That's it. Right. And that's that's exactly what's happening again at the border. Uh, when you look at the migrants that are coming through, uh, you're going to see a couple of things here. Oddly, people from mainland China. Right. Um, that are coming in because they know that's the easiest way. You know, our, our borders are open, right? Um, they, they're coming through there. Uh, people from mainland China, Venezuelans, and Haitians. That those basically are the the makeup of what's actually you know flooding in through our borders, guys. Currently, um, what can we do about it? I am not actually sure, right? Um, can I give any advice on what to do here, guys? <laughs> Haiti has been in trouble with the rest of the world since the Haitian Revolution. Okay, it absolutely. I mean, no one wanted to deal with them after that. Why would they, right? Um, and so that, that's kind of what's happening here. And I think it's still, I think uh, I think countries have long memories, right? Um, but all right, listen, let me know in the comments on the next thing I should be checking out. And I will get into that as soon as I possibly can. And guys, let me know what you guys think. Seriously, in the comments. I'll catch you guys later. Guys, before we go, are you guys subscribed to the other channels? Logical Movie Reviews with Mr. L. Boyd along with Mr. L. Boyd Music. Both are found in the description. Check it out.